Fire Department would like to extend our condolences to the family and friends of Don Dotson. Ever the consummate professional, Don's dedication and model of service to the Central Illinois area is one we should all strive for. His dedication to duty and his concern for fellow responders has instilled a debt of gratitude to the entire Urbana Fire family. This quiet professional spoke mostly of his family with pride. He would talk about working on his property and plinking. He would also share stories and photos of his times in Florida and fishing off the coast. It's a rare man who serves so many so well, and we all mourn his passing. Words from Velvet Edwards. You were my first FTO when I started at Pro. You called me an old timer, like you, and showed me the respect as if I had known you for years. Rest in peace, Dawn. It will not be the same without you. I first met Dawn, I uh, joined Pro. Um, I can't remember if he was already here when I started or not, um, but just meeting him on calls, knowing kind of his history. He's a Navy SEAL. Um, he's been here, you know, doing the whole EMT paramedic stuff forever. Um, and so I just met him in passing at first. I, I hadn't really worked with him for a little bit because I had a pretty permanent partner at the time, but I was able to pick up some shifts with Don here at Pro. He was never mad, never sad. Um, he, the best way I can describe him is kind of like a dad or a grandpa. He was always there to help you. He was always there to offer advice. Um, but he was never, you know, down about his day. He always had a smile on his face and he always had, uh, you know, he was always there to help you if you had any kind of questions or needed any sort of help. One of the other things about Don is, you know, him having that Navy SEAL background, no matter what situation you're getting yourself into, um, he was always there, you know, kind of as a protector. You never felt unsafe around him. Um, and again, like him, you know, having been doing this for so long, you trusted, you know, what he was doing and you know, you knew he was doing the right thing. Um, and he always, he always did it well, so. The way we put it over at Champagne is he was one of the good ones. Um, he was always somebody when he showed up on scene, you know, it was going, you knew it was going to get better. Um, and I believe, you know, with the outpour of support that we had over the past few days um, for Don and for his family, you could kind of tell based on that what kind of guy, what kind of a guy Don was. Um, and so I think, you know, all the EMT, firefighters, police, paramedics, you know, everybody coming together uh, really showed what kind of a guy Don was. There was one time up in, he was stationed in Savoy with Arrow, um, and me and my boyfriend Andy Stewart, who's an Urbana firefighter, were just there, and Don was upstairs, and so Andy decided to try and be funny and hide behind a wall and try and scare Don, and me, thinking, you know, Don's an ex-Navy SEAL, this is probably not the best idea, well, Andy does it anyways. So Don comes walking down the hallway, Andy jumps out of the corner, and Don doesn't even flinch. He just laughs at Andy and just keeps on walking by. He never had, you know, a sad or a mad moment with you. He always, you know, he, he was a happy guy and, you know, he, he supported and showed his support for anyone, you know, the best he could. He was always super calm on scene, which, you know, if your partner's calm, it kind of helps calm your nerves. Um, but yeah, super calm, super put together, knew what he was doing, never got worked up. Patient care is what we're here for. Um, we provide care to the patient. So his patient care, again, him being here for so long, you know, it never wavered. It never, he never got upset with patients. Um, he never got frustrated with patients. He was still there willing to help them no matter the situation. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, Novacek and I are here. We just wanted to send you guys a video, to tell you how we felt about, uh, tell you some, share some memories we had of Don. Um, it's been a tough week for us, um, but uh, anyway, I just want to say you know, I was very fortunate. 
and happy that I got to work with Don and and, uh, and just have him as a friend, really. Uh, he was more than just a good paramedic. I mean, he was, he was just a great guy all around. Um, I was very fortunate to have him as an EMT student, as one of my mentors, and then as a paramedic student, and then actually getting to work with him as a medic. Like, that was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of memories. Some of my most notable calls were with him, uh, but my, my favorite memories were probably chasing psych patients around downtown, downtown Champaign. Uh, he left a big footprint. I mean, he touched a lot of lives and I just, it, it, it was an honor to get to know and work with him. And, and like I said, um, and then getting to work with you, Alex and Danville, your, your guys' whole family, really, your mom. Uh, I love y'all so much. Y'all, y'all mean a lot to me. And, you know, I've, I have such a incredible heartache for y'all right now. Um, not just because I lost one of my friends, but like to see you guys having to go through everything is just it's sad but um we've gotten through a lot together and you know i have no doubt that we'll get through this um together is is the big thing um i hope y'all know that i'm here for y'all um i miss y'all um you know Novacek and i we just had breakfast this morning and we were just talking about where where we were where we've been where we're at now um you know, both on the fire department out here in Indianapolis um, and Carmel and stuff. And like, it's kind of fun getting to know that uh, Don had a hand in that, you know, uh, grooming us to be uh, better men than what we were. So um, again, I love y'all very much. Yeah, I know, like Josh said, uh, riding with Don as a medic student, you know, working with him in Danville, working with you, Alex, best partner I ever had. Um, Don made, you know, the, the world a better place every day, whether it was teaching somebody and whatnot. Uh, I never worked a shift where I didn't become a better medic because of him. I think, uh, anyone who worked with him was a better person. He, he didn't, he didn't play by the rules to, you know, please people. He played by the rules to treat people <laughs> right. You know, he, he was doing what was best for, for everybody and, and looking out for people rather than, you know, looking out for himself. And I'm so thankful that I, I even got to know him, got to work with him. Uh, the service he did for our country and everything, it's just it's unbelievable. And we were all lucky and blessed to get to know him. And it's going to be missed dear- dearly, but he's for sure someone who I'll never forget. And I'll never stop talking about, you know, he's the type of guy you want, you know, showing up to your house at 2 a.m. when you need help. And I think he helped prepare a bunch of us to hopefully be that guy someday. Like Josh said, you know, we're both where we're at today, and it's because of, of Don and people like Don. So, yeah, you know, just keep your heads up. Know that we're always here for you. Um, I know we're not local anymore, but yeah, you know, hour and a half away. I'll get in my car anytime you need. My phone's We're going to see you soon. Yeah, promise. So, you know, anyway, we, just, we love you guys, and know that you're, you're still, you know, in our thoughts and prayers every day and whatnot, so... We miss you and keep your chin up and like I like you said we'll get through this. Isn't that right, Summer? <laughs> All right, we'll uh, we're gonna sign off here, but uh, again we'll see you soon. Um, love y'all and uh, all right. So I was uh, I got, I was the lucky one. I was the new kid who was coming on to 24s and somehow managed to be partnered with the legend. And everyone knew Don as the seal and nobody could believe that I was lucky enough to be his partner as the new kid. And he really pushed me to be a paramedic and he always joked that he was gonna make me his prodigy. Everybody knew him and he was the epitome of a paramedic and a hero. And between his service in the Navy as a SEAL or in the fire service or as a paramedic, uh, he just exuded excellence. His patient care was phenomenal and 
I learned so much from him and like I said he pushed me to be a paramedic and the things that he would do you know he had all sorts of old school tricks up his sleeve and you know he, he pride, prided himself on being old school and just really putting the patient first. There's a hole that's never going to be filled. There's people that you work with, and then there's what we had. Uh, me and Don and Bryson and Ian were a family, and it was just different. He was like our dad, and he tried his hardest to keep us in line, but when he couldn't, he would just join in the shenanigans too. <laughs> there's a lot of stories that aren't even appropriate to tell. <laughs> But they're the reasons we're able to keep laughing as we do because he just was always able to put a smile on your face. I think the new people or people are always going to have stories and his name is going to live on forever as Don, you know, like they're just going to keep talking about him and these new people are gonna hear about him and have no idea the kind of man he was, but they're gonna know how great he was. <laughs> what Don wanted, Don got. And if he didn't get it in a timely fashion, he would make sure it happened any way that he knew how. Uh, he wanted a new chair at the West House and Management didn't provide it fast enough, and so he went and bought it himself, and we shoved a brand new recliner into the back of 8977 and brought it to the West House in the middle of the evening. The quotes he would say, like I said, most of them aren't appropriate, um, but the old war stories and the things that would come out of his mouth. <laughs> you, you can't even repeat them, but they're hilarious. He expected perfection, and he did everything with perfection. And you know, the start of your shift, you come in, you clean your truck, you make sure everything is good to go, and you are completely 100% prepared. And even today, as I was cleaning the truck, you know, the, <laughs> the wheels weren't clean enough, and so we cleaned them again because he would expect them to shine. And with patient care, he always said, the minute you stop learning, get out of the industry because you're always going to have to learn more. And, you know, that has gotten me through paramedic class. And, you know, as I go on to be a paramedic, everything I'm going to do for the rest of my career is going to be trying to follow after him and just being, being a quarter of the paramedic he was. Don, you taught me many great things, from one of my very first orientation shifts, just showing me the ropes, to just being a loving, caring person, and including me in your family. I love you, Lori, Alex, and Ty. Don Dotson, uh, what do you say about the man? He was the, the man, the myth, the legend, the ultimate, um, ultimate partner to work with, never had a bad experience, top-notch patient care, he was your friend, he was your buddy, you always knew what to expect, you always knew where you stood, um, he showed the true professionalism, uh, when I came to pro, pro stood for a certain thing. Don came in years later and he met everything that and continued that on clear up until his last day. His unit was always ready to go. His uniform was always nice, precise, the way it was supposed to be. Never had a bad experience with him. Um, even after Isla, or we really didn't work together and he went to Arrow, it was always still, hey man, how you doing? Being a mech head dispatcher, there would be times Don would be 
kind of off on the radio, which everybody kind of knew, and it was always, we'd kind of go back and forth on the radio a little bit, but we still, we could meet, meet up with each other, laugh a lot, have a good time. So Don was always, it seemed like on the wrong channel, or you would call him on the radio, you couldn't get him, or he would go on route to calls through MECAD and either go and route as the wrong medic unit, he should be medic for Alpha, and he'd go on route as medic four, or when he should be medic for Alpha, he'd go on route as 8977, which was his unit, him and Andrea, you know, trademark unit. Um, it was just always funny because you'd try to call him for updates and you could never get it, and then he'd come back and just always have frustration in his voice and just always off. Several times he'd get into it with you know the dispatchers here at Pro and go back and forth. And Don was a strong man; like he had his way and he was going to do it. And if he didn't agree, you knew exactly where he stood on it, and it was awesome. Um, we were a lot like that in a lot of ways. You treat everybody the same. And, you know, one of the last calls that I remember running with him, it was like a 72-year-old woman who was having some mental issues and she was struggling and she needed to go and she was fighting us and we had to fight her. I mean, physically restrain her and all that. And I remember driving down the road and we're almost, you know, probably about a half mile away from the hospital and all of a sudden she looks at me and she's like, I'm not going. And she starts fighting me and I'm like, you know, six foot five, 250 pound guy stretched across this, this, you know, 100 pound, 70 year old woman in the back of the ambulance who's fighting me. And Don's like, well, do you want me to come back there and help you? And I'm like, no, God damn it, drive faster. And we kind of laughed about it afterwards and we got her on the hospital and just, she just kept going back and forth. And, you know, still like, you know, the best patient care that we could give and, you know, we worked, clicked on it. We didn't, we don't have to talk and we just did our thing. When anybody comes into this profession and this career, He's the one you should strive to be like. Come in, you, you get your unit ready. Your unit's always nice, it's clean, it's stocked, it's ready to go. You treat every patient the same. Your uniform's professional looking. Um, you treat your partners the same. You work together as a team. It's not, it's not about me, it's not about him. We're a team. And if, if he's off, then I'm off. And if I'm off, then he's off. And we could get in the back of the unit and you know do our thing and without talking to each other. And then at the end, it was, like nothing ever happened. So that's, that's what everybody should strive to be like. And sadly, it's a different generation and I don't think people have that same mentality and work ethic and hopefully people remember that and follow him because that's exactly what he would want. It's hard to believe that somebody would take a disease or something after doing it for so long would have taken somebody out like Don. Just gonna miss the guy, miss hearing him, miss seeing him, miss that smile. The community is definitely going to lose a great paramedic, a paramedic that everybody who should strive to be like, um, the true professional that he was. Love the man, you're going to miss him. Don really embodied what it meant to be a paramedic and it showed every day in his work. And without him, I wouldn't be the paramedic I am today. Um, showing me how to be a good paramedic in this career is amazing. I, I've been struggling to find the words to describe the times that I've had with Don. Um, he's, every single shift that I had with him was amazing. He was the biggest mentor I've ever had. He's taught me more than anyone in EMS, life outside of EMS. Um, he's always someone I've looked up to. Um, he always, always figured out how to make us laugh and was still the biggest patient advocate that we've ever, I've ever seen. Don was really good with combative patients. <laughs> um, he, and I always usually take the psych patients as a basic. I always feel comfortable taking it, but he was very protective of me and all of our coworkers, and he would insist on taking them, being the Navy SEAL that he was. Um, and we always heard stories from like when he was in, like he didn't really say, talk about them very much, but when he did, he would say some pretty cool stories. So we, all of us wanted to see Don with a combative patient and like, you know, kind of take them down in a, in a good way, but um, the, the, the one call I thought that I was going to be the first one at Pro to see Don take down this patient, um, he was in the back of the ambulance and I was driving and all I heard was, 
the patient yelling, screw you, and Don yelling, screw you back, and they went back and forth for 10 minutes while we drove to the hospital. <laughs> so that was um, a little anticlimactic, but was one of the funniest stories um, I've ever had working with Don. <laughs> Don treated every single patient like a family member, but the minute they challenged him, he would he would put them in their place because he he gives everyone respect. And if he ever he would actually get upset if more upset if they mistreated um, someone else, like a police officer, or another coworker. But otherwise, he was genuinely one of the nicest people I've ever ever met. I feel like everything that I know, like the foundation of what I know is something I've learned from Don. Um, he taught me just like a high standard of care and not only care with a patient, but caring of our equipment and our truck. And um, I was the shift after him, so I always relieved him from shift if I wasn't working with him. And he had that rig spotless. And if anyone's been inside an ambulance, they know that the they're almost never spotless, so you can get kind of gross. And he he had this level of care and perfection and grace with everything he did, and that was what my EMS career has been based off of, is learning that from him. And the patient care aspect, I mean, you won't find a better medic that is a patient advocate and that treats everybody with respect regardless if they're yelling bad things to him. <laughs> Man, it's hard to say because this has really put, put a lot of things into perspective for us. I know with COVID, like we've, we've all been struggling, like it's been hard, um, but this really, really comes out on top. It's the hardest thing this year. Um, I think like moving forward, we, we carry him with us every day and um, I think of him, I thought of him last shift, I thought of him every shift and just kind of thinking, you know, what would Don do? And that's, that's kind of where we go from here. Man, and I feel, I feel like we already have some of those people that didn't really get, to, like haven't even met him, but they, they feel they feel his what the presence that he left here and the legacy that he left and everything everything about Don that we value we carry along with us and teach the new new oncomers and it's it's just that higher standard that we didn't have without him and I feel like even the some of the newer people that we've employees that we've had here are they, they, they feel like they know him based off of the stories that we tell and the things that we've learned that we pass along that we wouldn't have learned otherwise. Um, yeah, they, they, they might not have met him, but they, they know Don. Over, over the years, Don definitely taught me probably more than anyone else in my career at EMS. Um, he taught me about courage. He taught me about integrity. Always doing the right thing, even if you don't want to. Standing up for those who can't stand up for themselves. But I think what he would laugh about, and probably the most true, is that he definitely taught me to not take anybody's shit. And <laughs> that's what I will always remember about Don, and what he was always most proud of me for is <laughs> not taking anybody's shit. I think he, his favorite nickname for me was Killer. <laughs> we, we had a lot of crazy calls together. Um, it seemed to be combative people just were, just flocked to me and Don. Um, we've, we've wrestled in the back of ambulances probably more times than other partners. <laughs> Um, you know, when I first started in EMS, I didn't even think that was allowed. <laughs> and he, he just showed me how to do it. And kind of like what I said earlier about how he probably taught me more cuss words than I knew even existed. <laughs> but that's probably from him being a, a Navy SEAL. I'm sure they came up with their own. 
I'm going to tell my son all the best stories about Don, about how, how much of a hero he became to me. Um, you know, I could sit and listen to his war stories all day long because I always learned something and just hearing him talk about his service in the Navy and his career in EMS, that's what truly made him happy. You know, he got a he got pensions and things like that from the military. He didn't he didn't need the money. He worked in EMS because he loved his job and he loved helping people and he loved taking care of truly sick and injured people. Um, and I think he loved working alongside everyone. You know, I don't think he ever had a bad partner, or even if he did, you'd never know. But, you know, listening to him tell me about his deployments and the things that he's done overseas, and he's, he's lived a very full life, and, you know, I don't think he would want anyone to be, to be sad, even though all of us are. You know, line of duty deaths are always a little bit harder, you know, depending on the circumstances. And unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic took the worst, took the worst person it could have picked. You know, it took someone that cared more about this job than unfortunately, probably a lot of people do. You know, some people get really burnt out and Unfortunately, COVID has made a lot of people burn out because it's really hard running medical calls, not knowing if you're gonna get sick or if you're gonna bring it home and make a loved one get sick. And obviously all the PPE that we have to wear each and every call, it's, it becomes a lot and it wears on you a lot and you start to feel like you don't wanna do it anymore. And, you know, I think it's easier to be scared of things you can't see, you know, people that try to attack us or, you know, just driving code to a call, we know that we may not come home, but when you're dealing with a virus that you can't see and you can't do anything about it, it's a lot harder to deal with and, you know, I worked with Don on both of our last shifts and, you know, that's, I'm going to relive every single call that we ran that day and wonder how I didn't get it and he did. I think we're all gonna run calls in your memory, Don. I think we're all gonna push ourselves to be better. We're gonna push ourselves to treat people the way that you did and have the same tenacity and compassion about life that you did. You know, you've had life knock you down a hundred times you've been put in situations where you could have, you know, had a really bad day or, you know, chose to be angry about something and you didn't. I think just, and even the little things that you did, you know, you were always about cleaning the ambulance first thing at 6.59 in the morning. You know, you always, you always wanted to take me to get donuts for breakfast, whether it be at the Urbana Farmer's Market or Dunkin' Donuts, you didn't care. Just like you'd never let me pay for lunch for you. Um, I think we're all gonna look at this job a lot differently now. And you're gonna stick with all of us for forever. And we're all gonna drink a Mountain Dew for you. Don Dotson, when we became close friends seven years ago, I just knew you were one of a kind. The man who probably wrote the book of swear words, I know he taught me words I never knew existed. He also liked to come up with his own. For instance, Don would replace the C word with Pelosi, because I think we all know how he felt about good old Nancy Pelosi. And then he would get lost in a political tangent that just made me laugh and shake my head. He got pretty fired up about a lot of things, like freaking out when Arby's gave him sweet potato waffle fries instead of the regular curly fries, or his pure passionate hatred for drunk patients, or his very complicated relationship with technology. I think I reached a point in time where I would just take away the tablet or iPad when I thought he was cussing at it and hitting the screen too much. 
or any time we went out to get lunch or dinner, he absolutely had to buy. Every time I tried to sneak paying for either myself or for both of us, he literally threatened to beat my ass. <laughs> and that was just him. But that's who he was, and there was a never a dull moment with Don. If anyone was a do-it-yourselfer, it was him. He once made me drive around at 10 o'clock at night on a Sunday to every auto parts store in West Champaign so that he could replace a headlight on our rig. I tried to convince him he didn't have to do that and it wasn't his responsibility to use his own money to buy and replace a headlight, but he just wouldn't have it. He was bound and determined to fix it so that the next shift wouldn't have to take the ambulance in for service. That was Don. He was also compassionate about the people he loved. Every time he saw me, he always asked how my family was and what everyone was up to. When I first told him I was pregnant, I've never seen him be so excited. Throughout my pregnancy, he fell more and more in love with my son, who wasn't even born yet, and was so excited to get to meet him. Unknown to either one of us that that day would never come, I worked on the ambulance on the street up until 40 weeks, and I worked my final shift with Don, unknown to both of us that it would also be his final shift. My water would break two days later, and that's when Don went into the hospital. But I think the one person he truly loved in this life, though, was his wife. I learned how I wanted to be loved through seeing Don love Lori. Every time he referred to her, it was always my beautiful wife, my true love, or my baby. And every time they talked on the phone, he would just light up and grin ear to ear. Don loved a lot of people, probably more than any of us will ever know. God gained a really good one. Don was a good teacher for paramedics. He would do whatever he needed to do in order to get you any kind of call that you needed. And on top of that, he was also a great friend. Uh, he would do anything you needed him to do, including take the shirt off his back, give it to you, and still say it wasn't good enough. He was a very respected man and he'll be deeply missed. So how to describe Don? <laughs> it's kind of hard to put in a nutshell, but uh, we're gonna give it a shot. Um, hands down, one of the finest paramedics I've ever worked with. Um, very kind, very patient, very compassionate, um, and very gentle. You know, not just with his patients either. You know, those of us who are you know, trying to become new EMTs, or new medics, or brand new EMTs, whatever it was, whoever it was, um, always very patient and uh, always made you feel like you really were needed on the truck. Um, he always said, you know, he loved working with his younger guys because, you know, he brought in new knowledge or knowledge that he had forgotten or whatever it was, and I always thought to myself, yeah, Don, but you probably forgotten more than I'll ever know. Uh, but it always, always made you feel needed, which was, it was nice. Um, very humble, but fiercely, fiercely proud of being an American. Um, I wasn't scared to tell anyone that. Uh, I never really had to guess too much what was on his mind at any given time either. <laughs> but uh, Don, you set a pretty high bar for us. Um, we're just gonna do our best to reach it. It's gonna be kind of hard without you, but uh, we're gonna do our best. The work here is done. We'll take up the torch from now on and keep running until it's our time to pass it on. Um, you know, we missed a lot. I didn't have the pleasure of working with you as much as some other people did, but the times I did spend with you were some of the best days in this career uh, that I have. Rest in peace, brother. And, uh, we're, gonna do, <clears throat> we're gonna do what we can to live up to your legacy. Until we meet again, take care and rest in peace. God, I'm gonna miss that smile and that ornery laugh. I was the lucky one, the new kid who got partnered up with the legend. You taught me everything you could, knowing I wanted to be a paramedic. You pushed me to go for it, testing me every single step of the way. 
You always joked that I was gonna be your prodigy, and I always joked that I wanted to see someone try to fight the seal. I, of course, never got to see it because once you got that tone in your voice, nobody dared cross you. Speaking of that, you remember that one time? Oh man, that was funny. That guy's face. And I think Fire was more afraid of what you do to him as opposed to what that guy threatened to do to me. I always knew I was safe with you. I literally trusted you with my life. We got ourselves into some sticky situations, but you were always there beside me. You were like a second dad. I wish I could have kept you as a partner longer. I knew why you had to go, but it still hurt. Things went on like it never happened, and every time I saw your face at Carl, we shared a smile and some inside joke. Although you made damn sure everybody knew about that time I forgot my boots on a call as you shook your head with disappointing laughter. There's people you work with, and then there's what we had, gold shift deployed. Bryson and Ian can attest to it, it was different. The four of us were family, and you tried your best to keep us in line. Euchre nights, your steak and potatoes, chocolate pie, your Christmas carols as you typed your reports. I hold all those memories close and I laugh every time I think of your shenanigans and old war stories. You made such an impact on so many people. You left really big boots to fill, but I'm going to do my best to follow in your footsteps. See you later, 296. Thank you for everything. Informational page only for Carl, Arrow, and OSF Pro Ambulance. This is the final call for Paramedic Don Dodson to dedicate many years of service to the AMS community. Director Staff and Director Holloway and department members thank him for his service to the community. We'll never forget his honor, courage, and duty. May you rest in peace, Don.